The MySphere headphones that are on my head are one of the most unique pairs of headphones out there. Successors to the legendary AKG K1000 headphones, they are designed by the same engineer and are intended to emulate the effect of listening with speakers, but with a pair of headphones on your head. So what is that like to listen with? Well, MySphere lent me a pair to check out. The MySphere comes in this very solid case, which is very well made. It looks like it's very custom made too. And it, it looks like it's more uh, put in as like a, a precision medical instrument in the way it's kind of laid out and reminds me of those. Now I happen to have on here the MySphere 3.2 drivers, and I also have a pair of MySphere 3.1 drivers. And the difference, which we'll, we'll talk about in detail later, the 3.1s are 15 ohm drivers and the 3.2s are 110 ohm drivers. Now, this is not conventional like you think, oh, I'll play a pair of planar headphones or something like that, which have certain different impedances. It's a different situation with these, which we'll, we'll talk about later. So don't kind of assume that it's, it's similar. And they're very easily changeable, and I'll show you that later as well. But in the, in the case as well, we have an instruction manual. Now, this is a basic instruction manual, and there's a more comprehensive manual as well as test tones for setting up, something which I'll also talk about when fitting them. And that's on the USB here. Now cables, you have an option, a variety of cables. I've got four cables in here. The standard set, this is a loner one, has a couple of very long cables for kind of, for people who say might want to relax in an easy chair, or, you know, a bit of distance from their rig. So a very long four pin XLR cable. Interesting thing is the connector is a four pole 3.5 millimeter connector now that the pinout isn't probably compatible with anything else but this basically plugs into the headphones at the bottom of these these arcs so if you see there you can actually plug it in one side or the other to for preference or you could actually make your own headphone cable which goes to both sides if you really wanted to but you have that convenience there and this cable of course is very very long i didn't actually measure it but it's a couple of meters long at least but you can order ones which are shorter, and it's very thin. And you think, well, this is a very thin cable for a very pair of high-end headphones. But again, you'll find out that maybe a big thick cable isn't necessary, although some people have tried making alternate aftermarket cables for them. So again, some other ones we have your, we have a 3.5mm, uh, 6.5mm mm long cable. I think, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of these uh, adapted cables. They're maybe slightly inferior to a good dedicated plug. But we have a couple of short cables I can show as well for portable gear. You know, thinking a high-end pair of headphones with portable gear sounds rather crazy, but no it's not. There's a 2.5 millimeter, and we'll discuss why portable gear becomes a little bit relevant later when we discuss some of the little technicalities there. And this is another very long, but it's a 4.4 millimeter cable there. So we could try using that maybe with a DAP or some... If desktop, desktop amps hopefully you end up with 4.4 uh, millimeter. So that's what's in the case. And uh, now let's get into the detail about the design and changing the drivers. The MySphere are really well constructed for a pair of headphones, really beautifully made. So to start with, you have this, this arc, which has a thin kind of, I suppose, headband around it. It's not the, the most comfortable because it does end up sitting at an angle on your head. And then you have these earpieces, which they can probably maybe if I see from it's hard to find a good direction to show it you can move them closer to your ear and further away fairly but the, if you look at the precision of these everything is so precisely put together really neat fit I'll show you in just a second how how neat but you can remove the if you want to change the earpieces from the MySphere 1 3.1 to 3.2 all you do is you stick your finger in here and just pull and these pieces pop out and they actually hook into the into the band and then on the side you can see they're actually attached magnetically and there are two strips for the connection and two for kind of sliding up and down and if we turn it over you can see the connection strips are in the middle and they have six contact points which they connect with so you can don't worry about the roughness on the outside it's the inner ones that are the critical ones. 
And then, I'll just move that out of the way for a sec. These ear pads can be changed. And it doesn't seem really obvious because the fit is so perfect. And it reminds me of kind of like a very kind of German precision kind of thing. If we hook a fingernail just in there, they are, and just pull, they're held on magnetically, and there are the earpieces, and there are different, the ear pads, and, well, I wouldn't call them ear pads, they don't sit against your ears, but they do filter the sound slightly, and, but you can see the driver in there. It's actually hard to see the driver, the edges of the driver actually go over the uh, side, so it's actually bigger than it seems to be, it's not just the red part in the middle. And then here comes some kind of reflective material, and some kind of material on here, which probably acts as a bit of a prevent some reflections and then you can see the back of the driver through there so really this is really firmly made you can just see the ribbon cable inside there too really precisely made and these just seem to fit on well they fit on slightly magnetically but they're just they're not held on by anything particularly magical they do clip in place and then they just seem to sit disappear and like disappear slide in perfectly to become one with the earpiece to put it back together, it's fairly straightforward. You simply, well, line it up. Don't know which is the best way to do this, so you can see it. Clips in, just held held in magnetically, and then this part has a an angled catch which just goes in a slot, and then that just snap magnetically holds itself in place. And then you just give it a little bit of a push, and it goes snap. And then of course you got the cable entries in the bottom, which you can use either one. We could actually make a cable which goes in. Uh, you could go. You can make a cable which goes one channel per side. Even you could even do that if you wanted to. But really, it feels like like the some kind of headset of some kind of like. Oh, it reminds me when I went to the opt optometrist, like some kind of high quality headset like that. That's the kind of feeling. And of course, there's a the slide adjustments. Even you can has a shows you. You can actually once you get the position correct, you can actually make a note of where it is. How many. I guess millimeters or so. It looks a bit bigger than millimeters that uh, you can slide them up and down. Well, they are from some, from dead center. So that's the close up of the of the MySphere. The MySphere headphones were honestly the most difficult headphones I've ever had to review. I mean, compared to everything else I have here, they're just literally radically different. Starting with the electrical characteristics, they produce 115 decibels per millivolt. And that's like way above most regular headphones. And with that, that means they're extremely sensitive to power. And they only require 60 milliwatts of power maximum. And that's absolutely nothing. If you consider that even portable amps these days have things like, uh, you know, even the, the cheapest portable amp I have here has 170 milliwatts power output maximum and regular you know portable amps such as or portable daps i should say have up to you know 500 milliwatts or more their sensitivity you know they require absolutely nothing in terms of power yet they seem to require a lot of voltage swing so in that they they if you plug them into something like a portable dap you just end up getting distortion in the bass and a really shouty mid-range. They require amplification that is really excellent in terms of quality. Basically, anything that can drive speakers really well will drive these really well. Although you can't plug the 3.1s because they're only 15 ohms into a speaker amp. You'll just blow up the drivers. These can be plugged into a speaker amp. But amps such as you know, the Audio Genie Master 9 and amps around which have very excellent driver control will work really well with these because if you don't have that you just get bass distortion out you know unbelievable amounts of bass distortion so it was interesting testing to see what worked and what worked in my stable of things although i haven't tested every amp out there was the master 9 also head amps pico power portable amp worked really well the old alo continental v5 worked as well but the one that i ended up sticking with was the good old cord hugo 2 and the Hugo 2 can actually drive very sensitive horn speakers, for example. So it actually ended up being a really good match with these. So I got no distortion in the bass and uh, basically everything else sounded really good. The other tricky thing about these is that the fit is not really that comfortable. Given how like, thin this headband is, sitting it on your head like this doesn't end up being very comfortable for long periods of listening. So it ends up kind of clamping around here and, and, and pressing on the top and giving me a bit of a headache. I actually think you're putting like a, a towel under the headband to kind of soften things up. The other thing is you have to get them positioned absolutely right. Now in terms of how their frequency response, they're designed to be they essentially mimic a pair of 
bookshelf speakers and near field. So they're essentially flat tuned for that. Now you can of course tilt the ear pads in and out, the tilt in for more bass and more headphone like performance or tilt out for more sound stage and less bass. But you know, kind of the sweet spot tended to be kind of around apparently is about the 30 degree mark, although getting them kind of even on both sides was also a little tricky. And getting them the right same height on both sides is also tricky as well. There is a file on the USB drive you can listen to and test where you know to, to get the position absolutely right. And you have to get the position right, otherwise they just sound kind of off. And it's even just millimeter precision that makes fairly significant changes in the sound stage. So the only problem I had is every time I listened to them, I'd have to adjust them and get everything perfect just for me. Now you're ideally supposed to put the driver, you know, just where in the center of your ear and and have it set up that way. But when they do, when they are set up right, this music can sound really excellent. Now, again, frequency response, they're designed to mimic a pair of speakers. So in that, you know, you get a, there's a frequency response graph from MySphere, which is flat through to kind of the, the base where it kind of rolls off at about below 40 hertz or so, as you'd expect with bookshelf speakers. The problem is close to your ears, at least for me, that made them really shouty in the mid-range. Now, apparently the old AKG K1000s had a resistor or something in there, which reduced the frequency response around the four kilohertz mark. Well, I tended to EQ them down sometimes around the two to three kilohertz mark just to push down that mid-range because they end up sounding really shouty, kind of like Grado headphones, or really shouty around the two kilohertz mark. Incidentally, the Grado headphones, the reason they sound so shouty around two kilohertz is not just the frequency response, but the actual ear pads are the, the right size to resonate at two kilohertz. You can actually tape them up and reduce that resonance. Measurements provided by MySphere do have a bit of a ridge around the two kilohertz mark, which probably adds to the kind of the exciting sound they have. And the mid-range or anything in the mid-range instruments and vocals do sound very exciting and very much go like shot into your ears really in a really exciting way. And the treble, you know, I have nothing negative to speak about Treble is excellent also. The only thing it means that the, they sound very exciting yet very kind of thin. And in comparison, you know, I switched back to something like the good old D8000 Pros and these sound like absolutely dull and, and boring after listening with these because they make everything else around me sound basically dull and boring, you know, whether it be Empyreans, even Utopias. And because of this very exciting mid-range. And that does work very well with, again, guitars, with vocals, with anything that you want to focus around the mid-range very strongly and get the maximum out of that. Because the driver itself can actually move up to four millimeters. So you do require amps that can throw really good voltage swing and do have excellent driver control, as I've already said, just like they're good enough to drive speakers and the Hugo 2, as I said, can drive sensitive horn speakers. That's where it works really, really well where they sound very exciting, the music becomes very exciting and very interesting. I do wish I could compare them to the RAL headphones because they have a very similar kind of exciting signature that makes music very enjoyable. The only thing with these is that they, the music just doesn't have enough body and bass for a lot of stuff that I listen to. And I listen to a hugely eclectic mix of music. So when I got at that old, you know, classic, you know, Latin guitar stuff or uh, J David Chesky binaural stuff, especially because it's quite bass strong, that stuff worked really, really well because that is also very vocal focused, given that there's also almost always a vocalist involved or, or instruments involved. That can sound really exciting and really fun. The problem is with a lot of stuff I listen to, it's just like, no, nah, this is not a good match. So the thing is with these, they do require a certain set of, there are a very large set of requirements for these to work for a person. You have to have an amp that will drive them really well, something that is strong enough to essentially drive speakers. You also have to be listening to a lot of music that is very kind of mid-range focused, where you want the most out of the mid-range. And you also have to be able to set them up and position them very carefully on your head and not mind this kind of very hard, kind of slightly weighty setup with you know laying on a thin patch of your head the whole time. So in that you can borrow a pair, like I've borrowed a pair with both sets of drivers. Apparently Helmet's gonna make a set of ear pads which has, uh, gives a better bass response as well. So you can borrow them, set them up with, try them with your system, and you can talk to Heinz and he will help you out in, in discussing whether it could be a good match for your system or not. And I reckon that if a whole lot of people borrow these, out of that a certain percentage will find wow, these are exactly what I wanted and the setup will be magical. And for a lot of people will go, mm, that was interesting, but not what I need. So if the people who will be really suited to these, these can be very magical in how they deliver stuff through the mid-range. 
But for a lot of people, for me, for example, they're not the best. You know, I like a pair of headphones that can be good all rounders, like a lot of the headphones I have here. And for them, this is not a pair I'd pick up personally to listen to music with. So they've been interesting all the same. And I'm really glad that that Heinz came out and has reproduced a pair of headphones based on the AKG K1000 and a new design altogether because the the driver structure and magnet structure is unique and very capable in what in when it's set up absolutely right on your head but it's kind of like you know when you have a pair of high-end speakers and you have to sit dead on in the sweet spot to get the exact sound right it's a lot like that with these you have to get the sweet spot on your head to really get the musical enjoyment out of them so in the end the maestro are one that you you just have to borrow and try and see if they work and if they do they do they don't they don't so i hope you like my overview of the mysphere and if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or constructive criticism, leave them in the comments below. Did you try a pair? And give some feedback as well. It also helps people watching if people with who have tried a product that I review also give feedback as that adds to the knowledge that people looking to buy or interested in the product can get when they're uh, what, not just watching my video but reading the comments. And also, thanks to everyone who has helped make these videos. As always, these videos are supported primarily by people such as yourself. And if you'd like to get my impressions on products in advance, get my buying advice, all that kind of thing, consider becoming a patron. It's only the equivalent of buying me a coffee once in a while. So as always, thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.